everyone, and welcome into the latest instalment of uh, Smith and Hesson. Ian Smith here in Hawke's Bay. Uh, a beautiful day, actually. And Mike Hesson, I'm sure well, the sun always shines uh, in Dubai. And I imagine it's uh, shining there today. Mike, the first new- good news is, of course, uh, by my count, you've only, th- I think, got 75 nights left in that room. Absolutely. I think I've been through the room service menu three or four times already. So, um, yeah, I'm going to know it down packed by the time we finish. Last time I spoke to you, Mike, it was uh, about to be your first day out in the open. You've had a week of that now. So how's how's the last week gone? Yeah, it's been good. We've sort of gone through a bit of a transition phase from just getting outside. Um, and we've had probably half our squad haven't been outside training for five months. So it was that transition in terms of getting outside, getting a little bit of volume and not so much learning the game, but just getting that rhythm back from a, a batting and bowling point of view. In terms of the, the Bangalore squad, um, you know, I, I want to get to the nuts and bolts of actually how you came up with w- w- what you've come up with. Because, of course, the, the bidding process seems like it was forever ago, uh, but I guess because we haven't seen a lot of cricket action. So how did how did you come up with uh, the mix? First, I, I really want to focus on the overseas players. Obviously, the team is, is based a lot around the leadership and, and the inspiration of Virat Kohli. But you've also got a lot of um, leadership and, and experience. If I look down the list of, of your overseas players, I look at Finch, captain of Australia. I look at A.B. de Villiers, who, of course, has led South Africa over the years. Dale Stain, leader of the pack in terms of, of what he's done in fast bowling. Morn Ali, uh, of course, who's been a leader in an all-round role for England. So, man, you've got a lot of experience there. Is that a deliberate thing? Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, we looked at the last couple of years of how you know, RCB have operated and they've often had, um, you know, quite precocious talent. So they went with Hetmeyer, they went with, um, you know, a number of guys who have just come on the scene. Um, And what we've decided is that as overseas pros, we want some experience. So there's plenty of international, there's plenty of Indian talent floating around. So we need to get some experience in around that. Um, And also, so they can help share as a leadership group as well. I mean, it's too hard for one guy to to try and dominate the whole, uh, the whole environment. So if we can provide some support and help for, uh, for Virat, um, AB's obviously taken a big load on over the years, AB de Villiers. So if we can put the likes of, um, you know, the likes of Finch around him, uh, Chris Morris is a, an experienced campaigner. You've talked about Dale Stain. Um, so we very much went for experience. And obviously there's a budget a budget element to that as well, um, Smithy. So, um, you know, often you, you overpay for some because you can get some a little bit cheaper or you have a little bit left in the tank. So, uh, you know, we were very fortunate we got... Um, the likes of Asura Udana, who's also provided us a, a complete point of difference. Um, you know, most of our guys are right arm quick. He bowls loads of slower balls. So on surfaces like this, um, or in some of the surfaces we're originally going to play on in India, you know, he could well play a part just providing that variety. So, yeah, we didn't go for so much precocious talent other than the likes of Josh Philippi. Uh, we more went for that experience um, in the international scene. How is for Virat Kohli? Uh, he's, look, he's been fantastic to deal with. Um, you know, he's, he's obviously had five months off as well, so he's he's desperate to do well. I mean, RCB is a side that, um, as I said, has, has always had formidable players um, and, you know, haven't won the title yet, and that's certainly something that uh, the fans are well aware and certainly make us well aware of. Um, but he's been great. You know, he had loads of meetings with, with individual players and he's been, you know, really calm about how he goes about things. So it's been, um, yeah, it's been a nice, a nice uh, environment to work in. I would imagine it's for him a nice environment in a number of ways, but it would be quite a a slightly more relaxing environment. I would imagine if you're doing this kind of build up in India in a normal situation, for him, life would be a lot different than it is uh, a, a little bit away from home and uh, a little less pressure, I guess, hands on pressure from from that environment trying to smother him. Yeah, absolutely. And then you talk about um, the commercial um, element to that as well. You know, over here, because we're in our bio bubble, only a certain amount of people are allowed in the, in the environment. You can only do uh, your commercial windows for a short, certain period of time before they have to go. Whereas normally, you're right, in India, those commercial obligations would go throughout the tournament. So you'd be going from a game to a hotel to, a, to an airport, um, you know, to a commercial shoot for five or six hours, you know, get home just before training, you know, and then you're gone again. So it'd be pretty relentless. So you're right, I think, um, you know, most of the players, especially uh, the likes of Virat Kohli, will just be enjoying that bit more relaxed environment. You know, he'd probably almost be allowed to walk down the street too, which he probably couldn't do over there. 
Yeah, well, here it's more about walking down the uh, the hallway because no one's allowed to leave the hotel. <laughs> yeah. But on, uh, he certainly wouldn't be wandering down the street to the local restaurant in India, that's for sure. Okay, look, uh, the interesting thing for me is when you put your hand up and bid for these various players, of course, uh, was it still up in the air as to exactly where this tournament was going to be played? Was it absolutely certainly going to be played here? Because I'm asking about why you would bid, say, a million dollars for a bowler, Dale Stain, as opposed to a batsman, say, Aaron Finch. Uh, you know, when you've got that, you've got that paddle in your hand, you've got to make up your mind. Yeah, well, the auction was in December, so um, so we at, at the time the the tournament was uh, was definitely in India. Seven of the games were going to be held at Chinnaswamy Stadium, and then obviously the the rest. So that's where the makeup of the squad was picked from. Um, and then when things changed, uh, one thing we did do is, is Kane Richardson was one of our overseas bowlers. When he became unavailable, uh, we replaced him with Adam Zampa. So we looked at the facilities over here. Um, obviously, it's it's a long tournament, only playing at three venues. So the likes of those becoming more spin friendly um, certainly became more of an option. So uh, we felt we had enough seamers and we, we looked to go down that route. Right, under a fortnight to go, Mike. In fact, the, the date is closing in very quickly. The first game is uh, the Chennai Super Kings against the Mumbai Indians. That's on the 20th. That's game one of 56 in the IPL. Possible games, uh, of course, all live here uh, on Sky Sport New Zealand, which is fantastic. You've got your eyes uh, on 22nd which is game three, and that, of course, is the Sunrisers from Hyderabad, and that includes one Kane Williamson. Yeah, it sure does, um, and I'd love to see him play as well. I'm not sure whether he will. Um, I mean, last year they had uh, David Warner and Johnny Bairstow did the job at the top of the order, and, and Kane struggled to fit in, even though you know, two years before he was the player of the tournament. So, uh, look, I hope Kane plays. I think he knows these conditions well. He's done very well in these conditions. Uh, it just depends on that mix, but I guess the, pro the problem from my point of view is you can only really wave at them from a distance. So it'd be nice to catch up with Kane and have a coffee or, um, you know, talk about, you know, about how, how he's gone during his time in New Zealand. But that's going to be pretty difficult as well. So, uh, yeah, be waving from a distance and, uh, and hoping him and his family are well. Mike, everything changes in life. I mean, we're like, as you well know, you will we'll be reading what's happening here at home. 2.5, I think, Auckland are in at the moment. Well, the rest of the country's in level two. How are they doing it? over there in Dubai. I mean, is it possible that throughout the course of this tournament, those conditions will ease up and you'll be able to have human contact with the likes of Kane Williamson? Uh, I don't think our bio bubbles will change. Um, so we're, we're basically locked in for the full um, 82 days that we referred to earlier on. So um, that's pretty much going to stay. But the, I understand, hopefully, that the second half will be about 30% crowds. So that's the, the goal is that um, they'll be able to still have that social distancing and spread out. Um, over here, actually in Dubai living, uh, it's relatively relatively normal. Obviously, everybody's wearing a mask, um, but they're getting on business as usual. Right, of course, uh, a number of players who are currently playing in the CPL are going to come across. Um, they'll have to do a bit of quarantining, of course, and then uh, they'll get back into the swing of things. At least they've had the benefit of playing some cricket. And one team in particular in the Caribbean Premier League, the CPL, uh, has been playing outstanding cricket. And that, of course, is the Trinbago Knight Riders. Coached by Brendan McCullum, including uh, Colin Munro and Tim Seifert, as they stood to head into the semi-finals, unbeaten. Now, that, that's pretty tough to achieve in a fickle nature of a competition like T20. Yeah, he's making his coaching look a little bit too easy at the moment, Smithy, which sort of giving us a bad rap. You know, we, we go through the mill a little bit as coaches and he's just, uh, yeah, I've got to sing that on and just cruising around doing his job. So, uh, look, he's done an amazing job. He's got a great team in place and they seem to all know what they're doing. Um, Kieran Pollard's running that ship. Colin Munro, you're right, once again, has had a fantastic tournament on some pretty challenging wickets from a batting perspective. Um, and Tom, Tim Seifert is actually, I think he really would have benefited from this experience. So, keeping on those challenging surfaces against the likes of Narine, the ball going both ways. You know, he's actually done a really nice job. Even Fawad Alam, um, sorry, Fawad Ahmed, um, the leg spinner, you know, he's going both ways as well and, and pretty challenging. So he's done a, he's done a great job. Um, even the guy Tambre, who's bowls fast, quick, quick, quick leg breaks, which is hard to, to pick. So he's been impressive and he's also done a tough job in the middle order. Um, you know, batting at the top of the order is far easier on these types of surfaces, whereas having to come in and around these big power players, he's had to play a different role. So, yeah, he's been impressive. 
Uh, I agree with you totally on Tim Seifert. I think that it's batting ability and his, his ability uh, to be that dynamic with, with bat in hand is, is uh, I think, is has been one of the features of, of uh, the reasons that they've picked him. And I think that's cool, but the, the wicket keeping side of it has worried me. Uh, you know, his, his ability to, to stump, catch and be tied at, at a high ratio uh, has sort of been missing at times in the New Zealand side. And that's, I think we've, when we've been in the commentary box at home, it's been one of the most worrying aspects of what he's been doing. So I, I believe that this experience, as you say, will be invaluable for him. I'll tell you someone else who's, who's really uh, benefiting very well, and he's top of the tree in the run scorers at the moment, Glenn Phillips, who's, uh, his side is also, of course, uh, having made the, the semi-finals of Jamaica Talawas. He's had a heck of a tournament, Glenn Phillips. We've had three in a row now over there, so it hasn't been a, a one-off uh, performance. You know, often you look at Glenn Phillips and you look at his technique and, and the way he goes about things, generally plays at Eden Park, outer oval, um, you know, on good surfaces. So the fact he's had to go over there, adapt his game, learn how to rotate the strike against some quality spinners, you know, will be invaluable for him in terms of his career moving forward. Um, you know, one area, um, as I said, from all batsmen have struggled over there because there's just very little pace on the ball and you can get frustrated. Um, and he, I've watched some innings where he's, he's become, he's certainly become becalmed, you know, and, and stalled his innings and struggled to go anywhere. And a lot of players would have just slogged one up in the air and walked off, but he's actually sucked up that pressure. He's realised he's an overseas pro. He's got an expectation on him to get a score. And he's got through those phases. Um, and he's come out the other side and often dominated at the back end of the innings. So, look, he's been impressive, um, as I said, on on some surfaces where, where batsmen with far more experience have failed before him. So, yeah, once again, really impressive. Other two sides uh, getting through to the semifinals this year in the CPL, of course, have been uh, the Guyana Amazon Warriors <coughs> featuring Ross Taylor and uh, a player who's had, uh, I think, quite a big impact on this tournament, the St. Lucia Zooks, who were one of the, uh, I guess, uh, less fancied sides going into it. Scott Kugline on pitches that wouldn't tend to suit him, you wouldn't think too much. Uh, he's been very good. 14 wickets at 16 at a pretty good economy rate. Um, I think he's, he's put his name forward quite a long way in this tournament. Yeah, you're right, Smitty. He, he certainly hit, hits the wicket hard and... On those surfaces, you know, a lot of the West Indians like to jump on that front foot and sort of bang the ball downtown, whereas he's he's bashing it in halfway down. He's actually bowling good cutters as well. So he's not just um, running in trying to bowl fast. He looks like he's quite smart around how he's operating. To the left-handers, he's often throwing it slow and wide. Um, and he would, would have learned from the likes of Darren Sammy, who's a very, very good T20 captain. Um, and he's certainly getting the best out of that Zooks outfit. They're, they're overachieving, I think, in terms of how they've operated throughout this tournament. Um, but yeah, you're right, Scott Kugeline, he's, he's shown a bit more um, craft, I guess, in, in terms of how he's going to adapt his game on these surfaces. So he has been impressive. Of the other New Zealanders taking part, of course, uh, uh, Ross Taylor's been OK. I think he's slightly getting better at the more cricket that he's been playing. Um, you know, he, his, he's had a couple of vital innings for them uh, using a cool head. Mitchell Santner has been in and out. Uh, Corey Anderson's been... Quite a big disappointment for me. And I don't really, I'm not sure that um, Ish Sodi has, has probably had the impact that we thought that he might either. So uh, five matches only, just the two wickets for Ish Sodi. So disappointing for those two Northern District boys. Yeah, it has been. I think, um, you know, Ish has played in a side where they have really struggled. Um, they've struggled to a point where they've rotated their side around a lot. Um, you're right, he started slow and you had a little bit of a shoulder niggle, um, which affected his, him being able to get that pace on the ball. And you, you see the guys that do over that do well over there are the ones that bowl into the wicket. Um, and Ish, is, as often as a leg spinner, goes up and down and beats guys in flight. Um, and when you got when you got batsmen that just are looking to go downtown all the time, if you don't quite get it right, you can you can go out of the park. And he's you know certainly struggled in that that aspect. Yeah, Corey Anderson, I, you know I sort of feel he's at a bit of a crossroads in his career. Um, you know when you're not playing too much cricket around the globe to just be able to turn up as an overseas pro without um, cricket under your belt, put this put the pandemic to one side. You know, Corey hasn't played a huge amount of cricket the last few years because of injury and, um, you know, and other things. So um, I just, you know, really hope that if he chooses to, to carry on in cricket, that he, he plays as much as possible and actually plays some first-class cricket, at least as a batsman. Um, and that's going to give you that background where you can actually go out and start striking the ball from ball one. I'll bring you back home, Mike. Uh, during the week, New Zealand Cricket an, uh, announced that uh, 
They uh, are hoping to have a summer that includes visits by Bangladesh, West Indies, Pakistan and Australia. So a lot of international flavour coming in here. Playing within a quarantine bubble, uh, similar to what we saw or what we heard about, really. Uh, West Indies playing England, Pakistan playing England in England. And you're playing under the same sort of rules. So how does that work uh, from a, a, an international side of things as well? I mean... Uh, are we looking at guys that won't even shake hands or at the end of a game? Does it get down to that level? Yeah, it does. I mean, to be fair, it's a 120-page document, Smithy, which is, um, you know, if you have time to read, it's there's a lot of detail in it. Um, and it is about, you know, those little things around, you know, not being able to shine the ball or spit on the ball, um, you know, not being able to, you know, when you have a team huddle, you know, not being able to get too close, um, you know, limiting any form of human contact. Um, and it, it's, look, it's challenging because you've, you've played a certain way your whole life. You get a wicket, you celebrate. You know, that, you know, that supposedly you go over and you give a, you know, you give an elbow or you give a, you know, a bit of a, bit of a wave. You know, you, you see in the CPL, um, players are still instinctively just going up and high-fiving and touching each other, which is obviously something that that's, you know, in, with against the likes of social distancing. So, um, you can have rules in place, but the practical nature of the, its application is going to be a lot harder. Um, but the bio bubble is challenging. You know, you, you can't uh, have any contact with anybody from outside the bubble. So um, otherwise you, you risk the, the fact that the whole bubble is contaminated. Um, you, you've got needle, uh, noodle, not noodles, what do we, they call those little sticks up your nose that you get your COVID test <laughs> every three days. Um, yeah, they do it in both nostrils and it is challenging I tell you what um, they really get it in up your nose and twist it around it feels like it's up there forever so you get used to that um, every three days you see people in those PPE kits um, when you go down for lunch and dinner like it's a yeah it's a really strange environment to operate in I, I thought they were cotton buds I haven't had a test to be fair I oh, thought they were that's what they were Mate, it's about. It feels like it's actually hitting the top of your head, and then they spin it around and pull it out. It's 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 unpleasant. Might be other appointment of interest to me. I'm not sure it was a lay down Mazia. I didn't hear of any other candidates being mentioned. Was the reappointment to the coach of the Black Caps of Gary Stead? Um, uh, was it a, uh, just a lay down for you? Look, I think it was. I think that level of consistency um, in terms of how New Zealand's operated, you know, put, put the Australian tour to one side. New Zealand's been, been playing nicely for, you know, for a long time now. They seem to be operating really well as a group. Uh, there's, look, there's been talk around the, the captaincy coach scenario, uh, but I'm sure those two are both, you know, mature enough to work that out and, and function as well as they can. So, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a pretty clear decision. Um, the fact they've done it for three years gives Gary Stead that, um, that certainty as well and, and gives him that ability to keep growing his support staff. So, um, yeah, all in all, I think it was a pretty straightforward decision. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I think um, he'd done enough outside of that Australian window. But for me, that that hurt uh, because it, it raised a couple of issues as well uh, to me within the group. What was his relationship like with Tim Saudi, who's a very much a senior member with the group? We saw Saudi left out of that third test at the SCG. I know we're going back in time a wee bit, but all of these things I'm sure were taken into account there was also rumours um, before you went away, uh, which they've tried to squash too, about his relationship with Kane Williamson himself and to whether Kane Williamson was going to retain the captaincy in all forms of the game. So hopefully that has put this all to bed. But do you think there's still anything underlying there? Yeah, look, I think they're both smart characters. So I think they're both smart enough that though, if they have issues with each other, they will raise it behind closed doors. And, and I'm sure... Any captain-coach relationship has its challenges at times and, um, you know, have disagreements over certain selection, what players you might go for, maybe the style of play. So, um, you know, hopefully they've had plenty of those discussions behind closed doors and, you know, they need to. Um, I mean, any of those relationships, you need to have those constant discussions because um, you will have different views, um, you know, regarding certain players and how you want to operate. But but all in all, I, I think the team's, you know, ticking along nicely. Um but yeah, it's something you have to, you know, you do have to keep upskilling as well and, and, and make sure you're having those tough discussions. Well, you probably just had your breakfast or you're just about to. Mike, what's on the agenda today? 
Yeah, so we trained late. So, um, we, you know, we didn't get back from training till about 12.30 last night. Um, we, today we're training at Sharjah, which is about two and a half hour drive away. Uh, we're going to have like an open wicket scenario today, which um, tends to go for four or five hours, getting these guys used to the heat um, rather than just a net situation. So we're sort of getting into that more competitive phase, obviously getting closer to the, the big day for us, which is that game against SRH. Obviously, yeah. You miss home, um, you know. You miss miss your girls, and and uh, you miss the Eden and the new house that you the new mansion that you've just built up on the hill there overlooking the ocean. Um, what else? What, in this confined this space that you're living in, I mean, it, it looks like a, from what you're looking at, we might get you to give us a tour next week of your room because you probably know every inch of it by now. But what do you miss, mate? What do you miss most? Oh, you do miss the freedom, Smithy. Um, you know, being able to you feel like a coffee. You go down to your local coffee shop and talk to people face to face and. Um, catch up with your mates, you know, just the stuff that you take for granted. Um, you know, we all had that in New Zealand, didn't we? We were locked down. Uh, I guess we always had the benefit where we could go out for walks and um, go for a run or, or wander around at times. Whereas over here, um, as I said, you are confined to your room. You can go for your COVID test down a floor uh, with, your, with your helmet. I'll show you this, Smithy. This is, we, you know, we, we wander around with our mask and we, we chuck our helmets on. So we're, we're pretty fully ensconced. Whenever we head outside, we're um, yeah, we we certainly don't take any risks. Um, but yeah, those simple things. And I, I miss my golf, Smithy. We we have yeah. got a golf simulator um, set up in our team room, which is fantastic. Uh, but you don't quite get the ambience of of wandering around outside and listening to the birds tweeting away. Hey mate, look, uh, been pleasure chatting and having an update. Where as I said, we've adopted uh, the Royal Challenges Bangalore this year, so we're going to feel as if a, that's our team going forward here on Sky Sport. Have a good week. Uh, we'll catch up with you next week, eh? Thanks, Millie. Look forward to it. Pleasure. Cheers, cheers, yes. All yeah. the best, mate. Thank you. Thanks, mate.